maps and physics the way this one is. Um, this is a slideshow that I made up about math tricks uh, for the most part and a couple of mathematical tricks in there uh, along the way. But uh, some of the math tricks uh, have to do with physics and all, and they might be a little more mathematical than some people in the audience are used to, and, uh, and the rest will be uh, more or less of the normal mathematical variety. Um, the reason I have them on a slideshow is because of the kind of math tricks that I like are close-up magic. Um, you, you wouldn't be able to see this trick if you're way at the other end of the room, but I'll, I'll do it anyway. Um, I tie a knot in a rope. The people who are near me see very clearly that I'm tying a very nice knot in this rope, and I show it to you, and you can all see it. Now, I'm just showing you why I, I would do it. You'll see it again on the slideshow. And this knot, which is neatly and, and tightly tied on the rope, and is there for everyone to see, has a tendency to disappear into four space. <laughs> So, um, those, thank you. Um, those sorts of, I do one or two more. It, it's just that um, I can only talk you through the, seeing the trick when I'm doing it this way. But this is a very famous one. You tie a, an ordinary trefoil knot in the rope, and then and then you tie and then you put another weave in there so that you have a square knot. Uh, perhaps you can see it, but you'll see it again in a moment anyway. Square, nice square knot, and. Um, and then you make it a little more complicated by weaving the end through the bottom loop. And then you make it even more complicated by weaving the end through the middle loop. And you have this mess in the middle. And now you, you see there's no sleight of hand here. This is just the problem of recognizing whether something is knotted. It's very difficult to recognize whether something is knotted. <laughs> and, and, um, as long as I'm playing with this, I might as well show you the other one and then we'll go to the slideshow if, if I can untangle something. Okay. Sorry about that, I'm getting a ring off a rope and you know how it is with things that are tied on. Alright, now I have a ring here on, on my hand and I'm going to go through that same trick again. Uh, only I'm going to put a ring on the rope. So now this ring is is linked with the rope. And and I go through the same thing that I did before, making the square knot. And we have the lower loop. Um, and, um, and we have a ring <coughs> hanging from the lower loop. And now I'm going to thread uh, this back through the ring. But it's, that's just making it more complicated. As you can see, it's even even linked more with the ring, and then I will do some more threading, which makes it even more complicated, and thread it to the middle. And now we have this mess with the ring linked as much as it could be here, and maybe, uh, Jason, you could hold that end, and we'll gently pull this uh, and see what happens to it. Um, if we nudge it a little. Sometimes I make a mistake. You know. <laughs> so, did it reappear? Sometimes the ring bounces into the fourth dimension. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, um, on the other hand, uh, I, I also like certain things in mathematics that are quite magical, and this is going to begin a little mathematically and then move back to the knot tricks. So let's see what we can do. Well, here's the Klein bottle, and um, one of the great magic tricks of elementary topology is that the Klein bottle is actually made out of two Mobius strips that are joined together along their boundaries. And, um, and, and uh, if you make a Klein bottle out of glass, like Acme Klein bottle does, then you, Acme Klein bottle sells Klein bottles. I'm sorry, am I standing in front? I'm sorry, I'm not getting what you're asking. Oh, there's two things here. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get what message you're 
giving me, but we can make that a little large. Um, so, what are people saying to me? Oh, they just said full screen. What? Full, full screen. screen. Oh, they were asking me for full screen. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So, um, the, the climb out of this uh, is the union of two Mobius screws, and this illustrates it just beautifully out of glass. You know, like Tom. Um, so, I'm just showing you a couple of things that I like. Um, Here's another thing. This is a formula I devised. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those of you who are uh, mathematically inclined, um, you might decide this is nonsense. But on the other hand, I mean it to mean that uh, infinity is replaced by some large number, the same large number, and you take the limit as that large number goes to infinity. And then perhaps you could prove it to yourself. Where did that come from? This is my favorite personal formula for pi. Well, I'm going to show you the solution. This is a famous formula for pi. And this is a famous formula due to Euler for e to the x, written in the infinity limit form. Now all you do is you put i pi into the second formula and solve for pi. And you will get the formula on the other side. So, those are some mathematical magic tricks. Here's another one. Um, it turns out that a circle can turn into two circles, and I can prove it. <laughs> this is the proof. I'll just walk you through it. You see, one circle slides underneath itself a little bit, and then it slides underneath itself a little bit more, and then something happens that just slides <laughs> down. The bubble comes out, and, uh, and then the circle just uh, relaxes back into its original form. And there are two of them. Can you still get the control? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now, this is another magic trick that I like that's topological. Um, the Mobius circuit. Um, I have here the boundary of a three twisted Mobius band in this case. And each one of these circles is a switch. And if you press it, it reassembles the crossing in a way and puts in two parallel lines instead. Okay. All right? So current could pass, if current is passing along those lines, uh, in the up position, it goes along the top and it goes along the bottom. But in the down position, it goes along the top and then goes down and the other one goes up and they don't touch one another. Uh, so each one is a switch. You could make it a switch. Uh, but then you see that in the three twisted form, the Mobius band has one side and the light is on. And if you press any one of the switches, the light will go off. And you could have um, 10,000 of those switches in a row, and each switch, would, each switch would control the light. So this solves uh, a problem which would be a little complicated if you were to do it using Boolean algebra. 10,000 is 10,000 I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not the echo in the room. It's not working for me. So I, won't take, I won't take your comments so quickly. Um, and the next one, oops, I went too fast. No, I didn't. Um, the next one is about the quaternions uh, personified, and I'm going to personify them. You can do this, but I'll show you what to do. Um, you, um, we have I and J and K, and each one is a rotation of 180 degrees. Um, I is a rotation around an axis perpendicular to your body. And if you hold out your hand like this, palm out, up, and turn by 180 degrees, that's doing I. J is a, a rotation around a vertical axis parallel to your body, like this. That's J. Um, so if I do I and then I do J, it's the same as if I did a rotation of 180 degrees around an axis from right to left parallel to my body. All right? So, that means that I times J is the same as K. Um, and if I now do I times J, I'm sorry, I times J times K, which is another rotation around that, I end up with my arm twisted about 360 degrees. So I times J times K is an arm twisted. 
two full 360 degree twists, you will end up with nothing at all. So that one 360 degree twist has order two, looks like minus one, minus one times minus one is plus one. Um, we can demonstrate that one directly, and again, maybe it's easier to see one way or another, but let's try this. You, you can tell me later, if you were in the back of the room, if you could see any of the demonstrations that were done this way. But here's one, two, that's 360 degrees of twist. Um, and here's one, two more, so that's 720 degrees of twist. And now, I'm after the possibility of moving the belt around, as though this were a sphere hanging in midair. So I have to resort to what could have been a magician's sleight of hand, but isn't. Namely, I'm going to bring it around to the back of the sphere, but then I'm going to exchange hands so that it came across to the other side of the sphere, and it goes all the way around and the pin is no longer twisted. Okay? So that's, that's the same as this. It shows you that the 360... That's what happens every day to telephone cord. And so therefore, you are holding the quaternions in the palm of your hand in the form of this, and I would like you to try it. So put out your arm, right? Um, and um, straighten your body, and turn by 180 degrees, counterclockwise, and your palm goes down. Now turn by 180 degrees, counterclockwise, and your hand points to your head or your neck. And now notice that what you've done is the same as 180 degree turn around the horizontal axis around your body. So that's I times J is equal to K. And now you can try the more painful part of starting out again and doing I and then J and then K and swim like that. And you have a 360 degree twisted arm, which can be untwisted by without, without changing the orientation of your hand by doing that. Or which is also a well-known sort of thing. Suppose you often done with a glass or a wine glass. I won't try it with wine, but um, <laughs> and you probably don't. But you can you can start here and notice that when you come down, you've twisted by 360 degrees, and when you come back up, you've twisted by another 360 degrees. But by the time you're back, there's no twist in the arm. Shall we, we shall we all do it in sync now? <laughs> so, um, so all of that's related to fermions and things, but we won't talk about that. Um, this is just another cartoon illustrating the same thing. So I'll skip it. You just did this with your arm and hand. Um, but here is a little movie. Now, we made this movie a long time ago. George Francis and Dan Sandin and myself and people from the Electronics Visualization Lab at the University of Illinois Chicago. And it's uh, an illustration of that Dirac string trick geometry. With some variations. And here you see, of course, more than one band attached to the inner sphere. And here you see that the geometry of that hand that went around and around and the arm wasn't getting twisted. And you see how it has to do with the fact that the band is up and then the band is down. If you try this with a belt, you'll find that belts rather naturally do this. You can attach a belt and then twist it, and it will tend to go up and down if you get the tension right, and so therefore not get twisted. And here's a depiction of the Philippine wine dance. But there's no wine in the glasses because it was just too messy to take and retake. You mean it doesn't work in practice? <laughs> and here's the string trick itself. Happens every day to the telephone cord. <laughs> and then this last bit is illustrating how you could have a lot of things connected from inside to outside, and they would all ripen 
themselves every 720 degrees. Magic. Now you might want to see it again, so here's another movie of the same thing. It's a different movie, but it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. This is called the Chef Follow Road Trip, and all magicians, according to what I read, it 